So it's good to be here. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, and thanks for coming out. My name is Nathan Suwea, and I'm an artist who works with Lego bricks. It's pretty exciting to be here, all these amazing speakers and performers. And then there's me, who builds with Lego. So I'm going to work on a sculpture here, take about six hours. Uh, we'll just get started. <laughs> it's an, been an interesting career path for me, uh, working with Lego bricks. Uh, this kind of sums up my life, seeing myself in Lego. Before I go any further, I usually give this talk to a room full of nine-year-olds, uh, so just try and keep up as we go through it. Growing up, I had very accommodating parents. That's them, actually. <laughs> they were always encouraging creativity. They were always, you know, expecting me to, you know, explore drawing and painting and sculpting. And they, they were very nice in giving me Lego bricks that I could use as an art tool. And I found myself many times on the floor on a carpet just like this, down there building with Lego bricks. It was, that was my respite. That's where I went after school, just played with Lego bricks. But then it came that, uh, you know, there was other things that interested me. Uh, but Lego was always still around. In fact, when I was 10 years old, I asked my parents if I could get a dog. And they said, no, you're not getting a dog. So what did I do? I built myself a life-size Lego dog. Now, it was very colorful, quite rectangular, um, boxy, if you will. So I called it a boxer. <laughs> but it was my first aha moment when I realized, you know what, it's not about What's on the front of the box? You can build anything. You can create anything out of your imagination. So I explored the idea of creating other things. If I wanted to pretend to be a rock star, I'd make myself a guitar. If I wanted to be an astronaut, I'd build myself a rocket ship. There were no limits. A little bit is what I'm going to talk about today is, you know, Mike mentioned earlier, design is about change. And I'm trying to change the art world a little bit trying to make it a little more accessible because I have learned over the years that art is more than just important. Art is necessary. So I'll go back and give you a little background of how I got to where I am today and uh, then pepper it with some projects that I've worked on over the past few years. So I get out of high school, I graduate, yay, time to go to college. I want to go to the center of the art world. So I end up going to New York University in New York City. And because in my mind, that's where I should be for to be an artist. And so I'm studying at NYU. I'm taking art classes. I'm exploring. And I still bring my Lego bricks. They're there. They're under my dorm room bed. They were almost therapeutic. I don't think my roommates even knew I had them there. But they were there just in case I needed them. They were my security blanket. Get out of college. There's some societal pressures. But you know, what does a young, budding artist do right out of college? Well, of course, they go to law school. <laughs> and uh, so I studied uh, law for, for three years and actually ended up practicing corporate law in, in New York City. There's my law school graduation picture, of course. And I was practicing law in New York, and I would come home at night, and I would need some sort of creative outlet. Uh, sometimes it was painting, sometimes it was drawing, sometimes it was sculpting. And, and I would sculpt out of traditional material like clay or wire or candy. I did a series of sculptures out of candy. And sculpting out of candy is a lot like sculpting out of Lego bricks because it's additive in nature. You're using these small pieces to create these larger forms. It's just a little more delicious than Lego bricks. But one night, I just thought, well, what about this toy from my childhood? Could I start creating sculptures using just Lego? So I really explored very simple things I had in my apartment. Could I recreate something I had around me only out of Lego bricks? And here's a great example of a basketball that is a sphere. And that's really when I started understanding how Lego could be an art medium. Because it's round, yet it's built completely out of rectangular pieces. And once I mastered the sphere, could I extend that sphere? Could I make it into something else? Again, very representational pieces, but just exploring what could be done with just these little rectangles. Could I create something, again, representational, but larger than life? And then explore the human form, even trying to make it life-size human form. This was a journey that was good for me because I learned what I could and couldn't do out of just rectangles. And a lot of people come to me and they ask me about my art these days and they say, you know, we notice you only use the rectangular pieces. Now Lego has thousands of different things. You can buy little tires or steering wheels or windshields for all their different sets. And I stick with just the rectangular pieces because I do believe there's some magic to it. When you see these artworks, you see that they're built out of 
just the rectangular brick. So up close, it's all right angles, but you back away, and those right angles blend into curves, and that's really the magic. So I, I put a website together. So this website, brickartist.com, was where I could showcase some of my little projects. And I would come home from the law firm, and I'd have email asking me to create things, and I was getting commissions. And this is an example. People would request me to build whatever their passion was. So some guy wants a speedboat. OK, I can do that. My apartment looks out over the Brooklyn Bridge. Can you make me a representation of that? Sure. This was an interesting one. The gentleman was the CEO of Bazillions Inc., which is the largest uh, manufacturer of slot machines. So he wanted a slot machine. And again, people are just asking me to build their passion. Someone had a real thing for ambulances and rabbits. OK, I'm there. That's fine. Yeah, we can make that work. One of the best parts of my job is that I get email from folk all around the world asking for random things. I mean, some of the commission requests I've received include an urn for my dead chihuahua, a working life-size air conditioner, a life-size nude woman with the head of a leopard. I have actually built one of those three things. I like big cats. It just made sense. Um, no, it was actually the air conditioner. And, but it was, it was taking on these ex exciting projects that really uh, got me going. And, and I explored my own art and eventually put together my own art studio. And that was an interesting moment because I got to a point where I was taking on these commissions at night and still working at, at the law firm during the day. And it got so long into the night that I was working that I realized this, this is, can't go on. And the day my website crashed from too many hits, it was time to make the change. And I had to go up to the 42nd floor of the law firm, tell my boss in the corner office, yeah, um, you know how I usually sit at a desk and I negotiate contracts? I'm going to go now sit on the floor and play with toys. And I left the law firm. And that was a very interesting transitional time because a lot of people were questioning what I was doing. I was following my dreams. It made perfect sense. But I had a lot of friends who said, you know, you're making a mistake. You're leaving a six-figure salary to go out and, and do what? Take a risk on toy art? And it was tough. And, and when, when you follow your dreams, when you follow your passion, you have to believe in yourself. And sometimes there will be people who you think are so close to you, but they are so negative, you have to cut them out. And that can be really hard sometimes but I found it was a necessary part. I believed in myself. I was going from a very secure place to a very insecure place, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so I, I set up the studio and I started taking on commissions full time. And the commissions grew and grew over the years. This is an example of the Iwo Jima replica I did for the National Marine Corps Museum in Quantico, Virginia. And they wanted to reach kids about history and so how do we do that? We will take this medium that kids are so familiar with, Lego bricks, and we'll re recreate this very famous moment in history and put it out there in the museum. And it's work. Kids are learning about history, and they're interested in about it because they know it as a toy. And here's another example of a great commission. This is one of two lions I did for the New York Public Library. Again, the New York Public Library wanted to teach kids about their history. And the library was turning 100 years old last year, so they asked me to replicate uh, the two famous lions that sit out front. So we debuted them, and they've become quite popular. They're still there at the library. So commissions have become a very interesting part of, of the job. Sometimes I get more interesting requests. This was from a couple years ago. Conan O'Brien was coming out with a new show. Hey, Nathan, can you build me out of Lego? Saw this, really enjoyed it. So he said, all right, can you make me a comic book character? <laughs> this is Conan's version of himself as a comic book character called the Flaming Sea. <laughs> For a, <laughs> to give you an idea of scale, that's how big that thing is. Of course, then you do it for someone, and someone else wants one, and it just <laughs> keeps going and going. But as I was working on these commissions, I kept working on art for myself. And these next few examples are work that I did just for me, things that I wanted to explore. So this is a piece called Think. Here's another one called Red. You see it's about transition, the figure. Maybe he's rising, maybe he's sinking. But it's, again, about that transitions that I was going through. This one kind of sums up that transition very well. A lot of people think that, you know, that's me coming out of that dark place I was in the corporate world and coming into the, the art world. 
that's fairly true. A lot of it has to do also when I was trapped in a cardboard box. But <laughs> either way, another figure, maybe he's building himself, maybe he's taking himself apart. This was an important piece in my career. It's called My Boy, and when I debuted it at a gallery, it was very interesting because a woman started crying when she saw it. And it, finally, the art was transcending that it, was just, it wasn't just a toy anymore. They were, people were seeing it just for the sculpture itself, just for the emotion there. And that was a very exciting moment. You know, I mentioned that this debut in a gallery, and that was an interesting process as well, because when I started doing this, galleries laughed at me. They were like, you build out of Lego. What, were you, some cars and trucks on a shelf? We, we, we were not interested. And it took a very long time to convince people that this actually could work as, a, as an art form, as an art medium. This one is called Yellow. This has become a very famous sculpture. It's a bit of pop culture at this point. If you Google the word yellow, it comes up as one of the first images. I've seen it in so many different places. I've seen it on book covers. I've seen it on album covers. A lot of people use it for their avatar. There's a DJ in Philadelphia who uses it as his logo. There is a major fashion label who used it on the back of their jackets. Some of this was done with my permission, <laughs> some without. You remember, I was a lawyer. <laughs> so that all worked out very nicely. <laughs> so I was very fortunate in uh, 2007 to get my first solo exhibition. And this was a real eye-opening experience because I had never done a solo exhibition in an art museum before. And what we saw were so many kids were attracted to the artwork. So many families who had never been to an art museum or an art gallery before in their life were coming to see the artwork because it was made out of this very accessible medium. People could connect to the art made out of Lego bricks because they'd had it at home. They played with it. If someone comes home after seeing one of my exhibitions, they can go and dig out their Lego bricks and start creating right then. Someone sees a marble statue, They'll appreciate it, but it's very doubtful they'll have a slab of marble they can start chipping away at. But Lego bricks are accessible, and it's really been amazing how many people have come and seen the exhibitions. I'm happy to say now that The Art of the Brick, which is the name of the exhibition, is now multiple exhibitions. We're touring all over the world. We're crisscrossing North America. We're in Australia, Singapore, Taiwan, Shanghai, Tel Aviv. We're going to be opening in Europe. I think that gets announced tomorrow. Sorry to my manager. Yeah, we'll be starting a show in Europe, and we're also in New York with a massive show right now. It's very exciting, and it's opening the art world up to so many people who have never experienced the art world before. And that's what I'm talking about, about making the art accessible and making the artwork accessible. This is an example of the show in Singapore, really putting a lot into it you know, in the terms of lighting and and really making people focus on not just the fact that this is a toy, this is art, but let's play with that a little bit and get you inspired because I want to inspire everyone to create on their own. This is a fun example. That's me to give you a scale of that piece. That's a, that was a massive piece. And this piece came about, this dinosaur, because when I was seeing how many kids were coming and seeing this exhibition, I wanted to give back to them. So I created this dinosaur as a way to give back. I spent an entire summer after my first exhibition just creating this piece because what do kids love? They love dinosaurs. So this uses about 80,000 bricks and measures about 20 feet long. It was a beast to create. And this is one of the latest projects I thought of was let's take some of the most famous pieces of art history and recreate them out of Lego brick to again get kids interested in the art world and, and adults. You know, there are quite a few dads who come up to me on a Sunday in the art gallery and say, I should be home watching the game, and I'm here. But it's because of this art, and that's pretty special. In fact, I get families who also write me and they say, hey, we saw your art. Uh, the kids were pretty, pretty inspired by it. In fact, when we got home, they went immediately to their room, started digging out all their Lego bricks. We haven't heard from them in three days. <laughs> Thank you. So for this project, this latest thing that debuted in New York a few months ago, what I did was take 50 of the most famous works of art and art history and recreate them life-size out of Lego bricks. You get a piece like Rodin's Thinker and then transforming it into Lego. Venus de Milo, Venus de Milo and Lego. Nefertiti, Nefertiti and Lego. Again, a lot of fun for me just recreating it, but also a great way to teach kids about art. <laughs>
And the fun thing I did with some of these paintings are, now again, these are all life size, but I want, it's Lego, it's fun, it's 3D. So I and added a 3D element and took some of the paintings and actually brought out the subject matter. Whistler's Mother, very famous piece, let's, let's make her 3D. And you know, let's see what that expression is on her face because we've never seen it. We've only seen the side of her face. As you can see, she's pretty stern. Um, <laughs> I believe art is important, I believe art is necessary, and I believe art is not optional. What I've learned over the years is that art makes people happier, it makes people healthier, it makes them smarter. There's plenty of empirical data out there that when kids are exposed to art, they do better in schools. When there's art in their curriculum, they have higher graduation rates. So I want to encourage art in everyone's life. And I'm not saying you have to spend hours and hours becoming a master of something. I'm saying a little doodling. I'm saying little finger painting with the kids. Maybe, maybe pick up a Lego brick or two. But that little moment will make you happier and make you a better person. And so for this project, this is how the exhibition ends in New York right now. I built this hand and I said, everyone just add a brick. And as people walk through, they add a brick. And they keep adding and you know, every person adds one brick and it's grown and grown. And this is only over the last six weeks. This is where we're at today. That's a lot of Lego bricks. And I can't tell you how many people tweet at me, email me, and say, I love that I got to be a part of it. I love that I got to express my creativity. And, and they're just adding one brick, but they are enjoying it so much out of making this massive sculpture as a community. And of course, I have everyone sign each brick and really become a whole part of the experience. So it's been a very special project and I'm very excited to see how it goes over the next six weeks and where we end up. At the very end, I'm probably going to take all of these Lego bricks and create something else, but you'll have to wait and see for that. So I want to leave you with this. This is one of my latest projects. This is called Hugman. And Hugman is it's my form of street art. You know, I'm, I'm based in New York City. I see a lot of graffiti from time to time. And I thought, well, I want to do some street art. What could I do? And so I came up with this little guy. He's about 15 inches tall, and he hugs things. He hugs trees or signposts. He hugs bicycle racks. <laughs> he hugs well, bicycle racks. It's New York City, so you know, it lasts a good hour, an hour and a half before, <laughs> before they disappear. But I've left hundreds of these all over the city. And I guess my final note will be this. My name is Nathan Sawaya. You can follow me at, at Nathan Sawaya on Twitter or Instagram. The worst day as an artist is still better than the best day as a lawyer. <laughs> Thank you very much.